Welcome to America's Commercial Real Estate Show, your source for market intel, forecasts, and strategies. Hello, I'm Michael Bull, and I appreciate you being with us. This segment is brought to you by CommercialAgentSuccess.com. Check it out if you are a commercial real estate agent or managing broker. It's the ultimate in training for successful and experienced agents. CommercialAgentSuccess.com. Today we're talking about retail and retail real estate, and uh, retail seems like to be the land of opportunity out there, right? There's a lot of people who are really doing well with their properties, and some people aren't doing so well. A lot of these properties are being kind of redeveloped for various uses. A lot of interest and maybe a lot of opportunity in retail real estate. Please welcome my first guest. It's Barbara Denham, and she's with Moody Analytics Reese, and she's joining us on the phone. Barbara, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Well, Barbara, like I said in the opening, there uh, seems like there's a lot of properties just really knocked out of the park and really doing well, but there's still some of those properties we see that don't seem to be doing very well. When you look at the market overall around the U.S., uh, is the sky falling on retail? Uh, the sky is certainly not falling on retail, <laughs> but uh, the media would suggest otherwise. And um, the numbers are really what are important. And what we're finding is in this quarter, the, you know, there are still more uh, store closures. There are more store closure announcements and more bankruptcy announcements, including Forever 21. You know, Barney's, a big retailer, is hurting. Um, so the mall vacancy rate went up in the quarter to 9.4% from 9.3%. But the overall neighborhood and community shopping center vacancy rate actually fell in the quarter to 10.1% from 10.2%. So we see this every quarter. We hear, you know, anecdotes about um, the apocalypse in retail, and yet the numbers show uh, positive occupancy growth overall, very low, but still positive, and even positive net rent growth overall. Uh, it was about 0.4% in the quarter, which is, you know, very slight year-over-year rent growth of 1.8%. So it's well below the rate of inflation, but it's not negative. Uh, and that's something that uh, you're not going to see in a standard media report because all you hear about are the store closures, not the stores moving into the closed stores. Yeah, yeah it's nice to know that overall rents are really uh, increasing some, uh, at least a little bit. So when you look at that neighborhood grocery uh, kind of community uh, centers that mm -hmm. we all see around us all the time with your current vacancy of 10.1 percent. When you look historically at that, Barbara, you know, for the, you know, the last decade or so, how, how does that compare? Is, is that really one of the best vacancy rates we've seen, or are we seeing the market even better than that? Yeah, I mean, the retail market was definitely better in the late 1990s, and even in the early 2000s, uh, we saw much stronger rent growth you know, above the rate of inflation, so 4 or 5% year over year. Um, so it's a different market, definitely. And it's a harder for a developer or an investor um, to invest in. But what we're seeing is, like you mentioned in the beginning, there are some very healthy markets and some very healthy retail properties. You know, um, most of that is driven by tourism. So you see uh, the markets in Florida and California um, but even some, uh, you know, in suburban Virginia doing pretty well year over year. So it's really about the market and the location of the property. Right. Uh, but so you, it's not as bad. Sorry. Right. And when you look at, say, pre-recession uh, days, uh, when the market was pretty robust, was a 10% vacancy about the norm? Um, it, it was probably the average. You just saw a lot more booms and busts. Right. So it would uh, it would go as low at you know it would go well below ten percent in the in the good years, yeah. and climb to close to fifteen percent in the bad years. Uh, it's similar to office, whereas now it's just held steady at ten point ten point oh or ten point five percent, really over the last four or five years. Yeah, and you mentioned Barbara that some of the markets are doing really well. What are where are some of the uh, properties or markets where there might be opportunities? Well, like I probably have mentioned before, uh, if it's not tourism driving it, it's growth related to technology and those kinds of jobs and where young people want to be. So, um, you know, markets 
like uh, uh, Raleigh, Durham, Tacoma, uh, Nashville, uh, certainly Orlando, and most of Florida are doing well. Charleston, another tourism town, where we're seeing healthy job uh, job and rent growth. Um, you know, even a market like Boston is seeing healthy uh, retail rent growth. Um, where you're seeing good job growth and, and tourism related is where you're seeing the rent growth and markets really in the Midwest and the Northeast that are struggling the most. Yeah. Barbara, what about new supply in retail? Seems like we don't see many much pure retail being built. Uh, what's going mm -hmm. on there? Well, we're still seeing some new retail being built. Um, very, very little, but uh, we still see some new supply. And another thing we're seeing is uh, we'll see a closed store at a strip center, like if it's a JCPenney or a Kmart, they may take that offline and tear it down to build multifamily or self-storage or their redevelopment as office or some other use. Um, so it's kind of a shift in the supply. Uh, and yet a lot of that space is being marketed by gyms and trampoline parks and other entertainment venues that are more service-oriented uh, but, um, you know, we are still seeing developers interested in retail space because people are still spending their money. Uh, and even though e-commerce has really taken over so much of retail, people still want to go outside. They still want to go out and, and spend their money in some ways. And we're seeing that in not only in the retail sales statistics, but in the consumer spending statistics. People are still buying things um, uh, on a year-over-year -year basis. We're seeing growth. Yeah. And these experiential tenants uh, are great to get people out, but uh, you mm -hmm. mentioned the trampoline tenants. I think their business is sort of up and down, though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had to get that in there, right? So, I know. <laughs> so, Barbara, what do you see for uh, cap rate trends uh, in the retail world around the U.S.? Well, cap rates are definitely trending upward, uh, and it's tough to see it. The thing about the trend in cap rates is that it's got a lot of what we call selection bias. That means that, you know, the cap rate average is based on what trades in a quarter and if what trades in the quarter are really, really high priced, well located properties, they might have an, a lower average cap rate that will drag the average down, even though the overall trend one would think would be that cap rates going up. So we see a lot of volatility in the averages and we always are cautious about a trend, but nevertheless, I think overall, the average price paid for retail properties is going down, and certainly the net operating income is either moving sideways or staying the same. So that would make uh, cap rates generally go up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting point. Uh, I'm going to be emceeing a, a, a Georgia Appraisal Institute's annual conference, you know, when we and we look at cap rates for retail properties, you, you got to be real careful with the, some of the change in use. Like we just, I think we put in a contract that $35 million center, and, but really half of that center is going to be torn down and, and it's going mm -hmm. to be redeveloped. So it's kind of hard to look at, well, you know, does the cap rate really matter on a deal like that, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you expect right. moving forward, Barbara, uh, for retail cap rates or, uh, or performance uh, overall? Well, you know, like you just mentioned, there's still opportunities out there. Maybe not the a retail property will be sold as a straight retail deal. Mm -hmm. um, but you remember the population and the job growth is still positive. And so people still need to get out and either buy groceries or, you know, buy furniture uh, or, you know, go to the gym and get entertained. So, you know, real estate is still a fixed um, commodity and... So I don't think it's a poor investment. You just have to be very careful about your, um, you know, your your retail base and your your consumer base there. Uh, but I don't think it's a it's a that's a bad investment. You just have to be very cautious about uh, where you are investing. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. I mean, I, I we're all buy prop, we buy stuff ourselves, right? Your your family, my family. So. When, mm -hmm. when you when you guys are, are buying things you need, you know how much are you are you guys buying online? And how much are you actually going out in, into some of these stores? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think there's the demand to see yeah. your your what you want to buy and feel it out and see it compared to other products. I think it's still very very important to a lot of consumers. 
I really think e-commerce is a bit oversold, mm -hmm. uh, either with respect to clothing and shoes, but also with respect to electronics and furniture. So I, I, I don't think retail as we know it is dead. I just think it's always in transition, and I think consumers will want to come into a store to check out the merchandise. Yeah, I mean that's good to hear from you. You know, you're you're young and a hip person, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, so are my teenagers. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, and my uh, my daughter, who's uh, 22, uh, was just buying some furniture, and she was uh, ordering it online. And I looked at the furniture, and I'm like, that looks very uncomfortable. Don't you want to go somewhere and, and actually sit in the furniture that you're going to live with? And she says, No, I'm good online. Like, okay, <laughs> all right, we'll see what happens. Well, Barbara, thanks for joining us. Great information as usual. All right, thank you, Michael. Great talking to you. All right, and uh, if you like more information uh, from Barbara, uh, their company's now called Moody Analytics Reese, and uh, you can find their website at Reese, R E I S dot com. Well, stay with us. We'll have more on retail and retail real estate. I'm Michael Bull. This is America's Commercial Real Estate Show. America's Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Bull Realty. For customized asset and occupancy solutions, visit bullrealty.com. Commercial Agent Success Strategies, incredible training for commercial agents. Visit commercialagentsuccess.com.